So this question is from Haley. She's in my Facebook EB Polars group. And her question was, what besides the obvious fruits and vegetables do you eat or don't eat? Any special foods you eat to fuel your body? I'm always curious about what other Polars eat. So on this note, um, I eat weird things. Um, I do not have a very exciting diet. One little thing, um, I, I do have a gluten issue. So I don't eat wheat stuff, bread, um, pasta, things like that. I know there's a lot of gluten-free options now. There's bread that's gluten-free, all of that. But when I went gluten-free a long time ago, um, like a decade or so ago, um, we didn't have all those options. So to me, I'm so used to not eating those things. And honestly, just the sight of bread, like makes my stomach a little nauseous. Like, you know, if you've ever had that one food that gave you food poisoning or that one alcohol you ever threw up to and you never can look at it the same, that's kind of how I feel about wheat. So even if I look at a pizza and people tell me it's gluten-free, yeah, no, hard pass. Um, so that is one thing I would say that's maybe unique in my diet is that I don't eat wheat stuff. Um, I do eat a lot of fruits and vegetables when I can, but sometimes with like busy work schedule, things like that, I do my best to eat fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables, but sometimes travel days and things like that, sometimes it's hard to keep fruit stuff, fresh stuff. So I do eat bars as well. Um, you know, Cliff bars are probably one of my favorites. I have little bitty ones that are like this big and they're perfect bite size that I can snack on between classes. Um, perhaps a not so well-known fact about me or anyone who knows me in person knows I eat a lot and I eat like constantly. Um, with the exception of right now, I just got new Invisalign things, which is really cutting into my eating schedule and my coffee schedule. Um, so on that note, yes, I do drink coffee, a lot of it, um, slightly less so now because I can't drink it while I have my retainer things in. Um, but yeah, so eating wise, fruits, vegetables, I'm not a vegetarian. I do eat meat. I'm not a huge meat eater, um, but I do get anemic fairly easily. That's something that runs in my family. Plus something um, years ago I learned talking with a nutritionist, nutritional specialist is that um, anemia is also more likely in athletes such as myself and probably yourself as well, because we're constantly working out. When we're working out, you're actually destroying your blood, red blood cells. And in destroying your red blood cells, you are decreasing the potential for maintaining that above anemia level um, because of that constant blood cell death. Um, so that is something that if you're training on a regular basis at a high intensity, keep in mind if you start feeling your energy levels getting low, um, I would definitely do a little research on anemia and possibly even check with your doctor and get checked with that if that's something you're feeling. To me personally, when I start feeling anemic, um, A, circulation feels not so good. My toes, my fingers are cold, which I'm always a little bit on that side as it is. Um, and I just start to feel just weak. Um, even if I've slept, even if I haven't trained that day, um, that feeling like your muscles are just depleted of glycogen, it's just sort of this depressed, like <sighs> exhausted. Um, that's how, how I feel. Um, so for me, when I start feeling that way, like I said, I'm not a big meat eater, especially not a red meat eater, um, but something, and these are of course my own personal, I am not a nutritionist. So these are things I would definitely recommend that you consult with a nutritionist. Um, even though my background is in exercise science and biomechanics, I'm not a specialist in the nutrition area. So like I said, these are just kind of the things that have worked for me and something that you might want to look into for yourself if you're finding similar issues. Um, but when I start to feel the anemia, I actually consulted with someone I know who eats raw and she eats very healthy because in the past, the doctors have prescribed iron pills for me, which I was not super keen on. And it's really hard to find just the right amount. And I try to stay with more natural things whenever possible. Uh, but she actually um, recommended turmeric and it's amazing. So for me, when I start feeling that anemia coming on, um, take a couple teaspoons of turmeric and put it in a little bit of orange juice and shake it up. Um, you can even get them at Jamba Juice like that. They sell it as a little turmeric shot and that helps with the anemia. Um, added benefit is actually turmeric is hel helpful as an anti-inflammatory. So for all the training and such that we're doing, that anti-inflammatory is of course beneficial as well. So, um, yeah, so for me, my diet, um, like I said, fruits, vegetables, I love salad. I just don't always have time to eat it. Um, I drink a lot of coffee, even though I probably shouldn't, but like I said, I've actually been cutting back lately. lately. I drink a lot of water. Um, I go through 32 ounce bottles, 24 ounce bottles, at least four to six a day on a regular day. And even more so on some days if I'm training more. So I definitely drink a significant amount of water, um, which I'm hoping kind of balances out the diuretic effects of all the coffee that I sometimes drink. Um, alcohol. I do drink alcohol. Um, I've gone through phases of my life where I've completely stopped alcohol altogether for personal reasons. Um, I do drink now, not every day of the week, but it is part of my, you know, regular. I think to me, kind of the rule of thumb in diet and in exercise 
it's moderation. Um, wh whether you eat fruits, vegetables, chocolate, I'm not a big sweets person now, but every now and then I want something and I eat it. And as long as I'm mostly eating healthy, I'm really not that concerned about it. Um, so I really think part of life is enjoying your life. And if that means every now and then, like if you go on vacation, you're gonna eat the things that are part of the culture or wherever the place that you are, you need to do that and not feel guilty about it and know that when you get back home, you're going to get back on track with everything. So I think so often people beat themselves up about what they eat. Um, to me, there actually was a time in my life when I was very careful about what I ate. I um, was a dancer when I was younger. I did classical ballet for years and in classical ballet, um, you brag about your eating disorders. Um, everyone swaps techniques about how they make themselves throw up and brags about how little they ate and that was an environment that I was very comfortable with at the time um, to the point where I had enough of a significant eating disorder that it started to affect my heart and I ended up with a heart murmur and started passing out on a regular basis so definitely not healthy um, that's not a good place to be so for me now I I would say I, I watch what I eat as in I watch it go into my mouth but I don't regulate what I eat um, I would say and in between of those of the extreme of you know being in ballet at a young age and having very poor body image and being in an environment where that was okay and that was acceptable and not only acceptable encouraged um to i feel like in the pole dancer world one of the things i love about pole dancers is one of the few groups where you can put a bunch of women together and we get excited when our butts jiggle so um, one of the things that i love about polars um but as far as watching what i eat um, when I was a competitive fighter, I fought flyweight and I had to weigh in every time I went to fight and I oftentimes did a couple fights a month, which means I constantly had to be watching where my weight was. And what I found, despite the fact that I was very healthy at that time and it was close to what my natural weight was, was what my fighting weight was, um, I found myself obsessing about food. So because I watched what I ate and I actually like counted my calories and all of that stuff, it made me obsess about it. It made me, as soon as I finished one meal, even though I wasn't physically hungry, I started thinking about the next time I was gonna eat and how much I would eat, when I would eat, and, you know, all of that. And it, it kind of started to make me feel like I was developing a not so positive relationship with food. Um, versus now, I just look at it as moderation. Um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big sweets person. I'm not a big fried food person, but every now and then if I want a little bit of it, I have a little bit. Um, I do find that for me, um, drinking a lot of water, I tend to snack on unhealthy things less. So drinking water tends to oftentimes fill the void um, due to, you know, gradients, sugar gradients, salt gradients, things like that in our body that gets into, you know, chemistry sort of things and biology. Um, if you're dehydrated, you quite often will crave sugar or salty food. So keep that in mind. If you find yourself um, having a hard time staying off of those unhealthy foods, like you're having a hard time finding that moderation, increase your water intake. So I actually encourage people, if you're trying to watch what you eat, um, instead of trying to limit something, try adding something. So just try adding water. Um, so yeah, I, I drink a lot of water. Um, I also find that it's just the moderation. If I wanna have something, great. I eat something that you know might not be the healthiest. And part of it is because I do eat healthy-ish, more or less most of the time, um, I feel better when I eat that way. So when I do eat the less healthy stuff, like if I eat some fried stuff, like yeah, it tastes good at the time, um, but it just kind of hits me like a ton of bricks and I don't necessarily feel as good afterwards physically. Like I said, the mental part, I'm over. Um, that's, you know, there was a time when I used to agonize over it. I don't get upset about it anymore. Um, but uh, physically, I find I feel better. So um, like I said, if, I would encourage you to find moderation. So obsessing about what you eat, writing down what you eat, um, I would discourage that. Like I said, unless this is something that you're working on with a, you know, a registered dietitian or with your doctor, then definitely you know, that is always the exception. But for me personally, I always recommend um, moderation. Okay, try having a relatively healthy balance of fruits, vegetables, um, some protein in there, whether you're a vegan, vegetarian, or you're a ravenous, ravenous carnivore, um, but finding a moderation in there. So um, the other part with that, how much you know, protein, carbs, all that, everybody's different. Um, some people can function on very little protein. Some people need more protein. To me, for example, I also get um, hyperglycemic. So if I eat 
a lot of really sugary stuff as in like a smoothie, which is all natural sugars. It tends to make my blood sugar spike and I have some issues with that. So I tend to add, like I'll add peanut butter and I eat a lot of monosaturated fats, you know, peanut butter, avocado, um, salmon, things like that. Um, and those tend to um, help with a lot of that and help me stabilize my sugar levels and that kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, it's all about trial and error. Everybody's different and I would encourage you to make a plan and try it out and see how it works for you. And a lot of things you don't know unless you try them out. Um, I snack a lot. I don't eat a lot of regular meals. I find that if I wait too long to eat, I tend to eat too much and generally not something that would have been my first choice. So I always travel with food. Um, my friends, family, significant others make fun of me because um, I have snacks everywhere. Um, usually dried fruit, nuts, things like that. I shop at Trader Joe's a lot. Um, those all make good snacks. So anyways, this has kind of been a little bit all over the place. Um, but if you have any specific questions on this topic, please feel free to send those my way. Drop them in the comments below. Like I said earlier, if you have specific dietary issues or like that, definitely consult um, a registered dietitian or your doctor on that. Um, but I, like I said, for me, I just go with moderation and I find that that works well for me. But at the same time, keep in mind, everybody's different and you got to figure out what works best for you, your body, your lifestyle, and everything else that goes with that. So best of luck to you in all your training.